Hi everyone. This little video is about something that has helped me immensely in sequencing. So it's for you, you teachers out there, um, or those of you who aspire to become a teacher, or even for those of you who just you want to make your own sequence. <laughs> but it's more it's more directed towards if you are a teacher and you you are teaching sequences. So sequences, creating sequence, sequences, <laughs> it's a very hard word to say. <laughs> um, it's a, I think of it as an art and one that evolves over time as, as you evolve, as, as we evolve, as we learn more and we get inspired by different things or um, the way we, we feel in our practice um, and in our postures changes over time. So it's an ever evolving thing. Now, one thing that is very helpful when you are creating a sequence is that you know it in your body. So your body literally hums the sequence. How do we make this happen? Kind of obviously. <laughs> we make it happen by practicing our sequence, by, by really investing time to kind of like nerd out on our mat and get to know the sequence inside and out. One thing that can kind of become an obstacle to that can be if the sequence is very complicated. You know, we say we want to be really creative, and so we create a really complicated sequence that becomes um, kind of like a bit of a, a, a chore, in a sense, to work through. That can become an obstacle because you might be a little overwhelmed just thinking about practicing that sequence. So one of my pieces of advice would be to, to keep it simple. Keep it simple so that the second part of this, so that you can really nerd out in the activations and your inner sensations, in your experience of each posture and each transition, so that you can know not only the, the gross body movements and the alignment points that are required, um, but you can know the micro movements that make a posture or a transition blossom or, or that, you know, sometimes you get these little cues that, that are really subtle, but they make everything change. <laughs> so the way to discover those is through your, yourself, is through your body. So craft a sequence that is, is nothing really, that it's, that's not really complex or, um, or overly creative in a sense. Keep it simple then practice that sequence, cultivating a kind of discipline towards it, dedicating yourself to taking time, maybe it's like a half an hour a day, to sink your teeth so deeply into the inner workings of this sequence. What will happen is your body will come to kind of vibrate this sequence. You'll know it inside and out. So then when you're teaching it, You'll see everybody in the room doing the moves, um, and you'll have a relationship to their body doing the posture. You, in a sense, you'll start to feel what they're feeling because you've been there so many times. You'll be able to um, clearly give them specific cues that help them to open, and you have embodied those cues yourself. So when you deliver them, it'll come with this kind of resonance of you know what you're talking about. Um, and I would say that that is one of the top things you can do to really, really take your sequencing to a new level, to a, a new place. Craft a sequence, practice that sequence as much as you can, and maybe each time you go through it, you focus on kind of a, a, a new a new area of focus. Maybe one time you go through and you really focus on foundation. What how does the foundation um, really secure the, your body within different postures through the sequence? How can you become more rooted? So you focus on foundation. Maybe the next time it's like the alignment of the bones. So you're really focusing on, on alignment, specific alignment. Maybe the next time you go through it, you focus on the micro activations that help each posture or transition to open up. Maybe 
maybe the next time you go through it, you focus just mostly on breath. And I would say you kind of do breath later after you focused on foundation and then the alignment of the bones um, and the skeleton and activations and micro activations, and then add the layer of breath. And the reason why I would say to go in that order is because once you've been through the sequence so many times, it starts to embed itself in your body. So you think less about the movements. Then you can start to allow the breath to become the initiator of the movements. And at this, at that stage, it becomes this place where you can kind of let go, kind of like a dancer who has um, practiced a certain choreography multiple times. And after practicing so much, it's, it almost, the movements come second nature in a sense. Um, so the same thing happens in our practice. So yeah, maybe the, another time you focus on just breath and you really get to know um, how, does it, how does it feel in your body to ride your breath? Um, how does it feel to spend more time breathing? How do you breathe into certain postures? How do you direct uh, breath? How do you personally direct breath into certain areas of your body? How do you, how do you ride your breath? And you take all of that data and you really internalize it. You really digest it so that then when you teach the sequence, you'll have this multi-layered uh, library of experience that you share. And when it comes from you, when it comes from your experience, it vibrates. It has a resonance. It has like this like force, this power behind it. And that power can be felt by people in the room. You can deliver it also, just as another note, auth really authentically because you know it. You've been there. Um, so yeah, that would be, this is something that has really helped me to evolve within not only my practice, but also how I share um, and teach others. I hope this little little piece of, <laughs> of sharing helps you in your practice. And if you want to have a takeaway from this, something to work on, this is your homework. Craft a sequence that's not too complex. Let it be simple. Then practice it half an hour a day. And if you don't have five days available, that's okay. You could do three, to, three times a week. But really give yourself two weeks to practice it um, every day for half an hour a day. Um, that might mean that you only do one section uh, and then you do the next section or something like that. You can be kind of relaxed about that part, but get on your mat and practice it. Each time you practice it, focus on something different, uh, a new layer, so that you're really harnessing your ability to focus in on one aspect, to get to know that aspect, the, the foundation or the activations, alignment, breath flow, riding the breath, um, and then have a journal with you and take notes. If you don't want to take notes while you're, you're practicing because you really just want to be infused, take notes directly after, before you move into Shavasana. Take notes. What did you notice? What did you learn? What did you discover? Get really curious. Write it all down. Then have a Shavasana, integrate it, and see how that affects your, your sequencing and your teaching. Okay, thank you guys. Thanks for tuning in, and I will see you soon. Thank you.